Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to this week's Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark. And I'm Kerry Kermode. This week I popped along to Knockalo to see the Young Farmers Annual Field Day. I went to a vintage vehicle show at the wonderful grounds at St Mark's Country Park. Well, Harveston continues uh, in amongst all the showers and bits and pieces, but this, the odd few days, which just lets the, the combines in and get a chance to get something done. And, of course, uh, sheep are getting dipped, um, things like that happening on the farms. And uh, There was a couple of sheep sales been happening as well. Kiri, how did they go? Any any news? That's right. Anna Karouche there at uh, Ballafeld and Mackle had her sale and also the Korea family from Ballagloni and Crosby were away with theirs. Prices seemed good, Simon. I think everyone was delighted with their purchases. There was a few less on offer than all the years, so it did push the price up a little bit. But there was a nice display of tups there at Ballagloni, as usual. Uh, the strong tups got away well, up to 880-odd pounds. So they're, they're going well. Mm. People gearing up for now. I mean, they're trying to get that, uh, I suppose, the, the barley and wheat is just about ready for doing in lots of places. That's right, there's yeah. a few people getting a bit of whole crop done and like you say the harvest is only around the corner, we've had some heat this weekend where it would have been the Royal Manx show, uh, people were able to get the last bit of hay done and whatnot. but I think there's a lot gathered this year so um, at the minute all bodes well for the winter um, but like we say get them uh, ploughs in and a bit of last, last minute green crop for the winter lambs and uh, we'll be away well. Yeah and uh, there's some beautiful aromas around the countryside at the moment, not the usual ones from mid but the, the <laughs> smell of the peas growing in some of the places, isn't it? That's right. And yeah, down with us there, there's some turnips being planted and the butterflies, the cabbage white butterfly, all flying over. Beautiful. But the smell, like you say, of the turnips is uh, certainly getting strong now. No turnip white butterflies, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the young farmers uh, have had a, a fairly lean time of it lately, but uh, you uh, attended an event that they had uh, seem to attract a lot of interest. That's right, a lot of young, young farmers out there at Knockalo at their annual field day. I popped along to see what was going on and caught up with some of the people that were in charge and some of the competitors. Well, Jason Moore, a beautiful day here at Knockalo for the Young Farmers Field Day. Well, we're looking at a quad bike, a trailer and an assault course. How are things going here? Well, it's Young Farmers, so I'm sure you can put two and two together. <laughs> um, no, it's good. Like I say, the weather's nice. We've had a nice week all week. Um, and like I say, unfortunately, we didn't get any shows this year, the, the Southern and the Royal. So it's just nice to have a day out, really, and get all the Young Farmers together again and obviously under the blue sky. So it's nice. It's good. It really is good. So you've brought a whole pile of challenges together. We have all sorts going on today. Yeah, it's a bit of a mixture, really. Uh, there's face painting and um, bale rolling, let's say, the quad course. And I say a good mixture, really, sort of... Uh, sort of a course for everyone really so I'd say plenty of people are getting involved and no it's good it's a good turnout as well for the young farmers. So how does it work? Um, it, obviously we've got northern central southern and eastern all against each other is it teams of two or three or individuals or how does it go? So each course um, is timed um, and let's say and then the, the, the fastest time gets the most points depending on who's in, in what club uh, at the end of the day all the points are added up um, and yeah see who's got the most points at the end of the day. And have you been doing any of the home baking? No, absolutely oh. not. Beans on toast is about <laughs> as, as much as I can do. Well, what a display in there. And, and Kelly Corrin had a, a really tricky job at judging them there, Jason, and a credit to all young farmers. Yeah, it's uh, you know, some, some good stuff in that tent, actually. Um, I'd like to eat it myself, but, you know, I'm on a diet. I don't want to ruin my figure. <laughs> but, uh, no, let's say there's some good competition today. Uh, not only in the tent, but outside as well. You know, it's all good sportsmanship in the young farmers, as you know. So, but no, everyone seems to have a good time. And, like I say, it's nice to get everyone out together again and, and enjoy the time. So... And later on, there's going to be a little bit of a social. It'll be the first one of the year, really, I suppose. Yes, yeah, it will be. Well, we had the, the Northern Barn Party there a few weeks ago, but this will be the first one organised by the Federation. So, no, it'll be good to be a nice end to the weekend. So, no, it'll be good. Well, Finn Locria, chairperson of the Federation of Young Farmers. It's all go here at Knockalo. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's uh, a lot of people down, cracking day. And now you've obviously been left in charge of this great big digger, a 360, to do a challenge. Now, I know nothing about diggers, Finlow, so what do they have to do here? Um, just move, like, uh, <laughs> a water bottle, like a tiny water bottle with the bucket 
from cone to cone, so it takes a little bit of skill. It's just something different, something to keep people occupied. And that's what I like about Young Farmers. You, you spice it up all the time. Every, all the competitions you've had throughout the last few years are, have bringing new modern ideas to the Isle of Man. The quad, the quad challenge, the 360 diggers, and also I believe there was a hedge trimmer and a football involved earlier. Yeah, uh, Steena set up something where you had to balance a football and a hedge trimmer and drive around the course. So the Duggan family always good to come up with something. <laughs> That's Probably spent it. weeks around the kitchen table thinking of it. That's it. it is. It's like those new ideas are so important, aren't they? But, you know, there's, there's food here. Families are out for the full day out, though, And it is like the first event since lockdown. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And it's good weather, which is absolute pain for farmers, but good when you're here. It just makes, uh, makes it hard for people to get here. They've got stuff to do, doesn't it? And how has the morale been through the lockdown? Finlow, you mentioned the farmers there. Obviously, young farmers are a huge part of the Isle of Man agricultural scene. H- has it been hard for, for all of agriculture? I'd say, yeah, but it's also been a lot easier for people working in agriculture because you're, you're never stuck in your house. and like You'd see people not... You wouldn't be intentionally going to see people, but you'd see people out and about and at country stores or whatever. And so I think we had it quite lucky compared to somebody stuck in the middle of a town, which we are very grateful for. Right? All that, this is it. And uh, like Kelly said earlier, you know, we are in our own little bubble here on the Isle of Man. And, and that idea of being safe, you can see people enjoying themselves here. It is very different in the UK still. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, we've got clubs open, they've got nothing like that and no social distancing or anything. So it's great, no cases. Hopefully it'll stay like that for a bit anyway. Well, Michael Neal, we've come over here. You're doing the pallet construction. What are you making? Uh, we're making a doghouse. Well, attempting to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so who's, who's got the plan? Uh, we've all come up with a rough plan. Um, Nathan and Harvey's come to help out as well. We've got Tom Kane here as well. He's cut his finger, so he's just uh, oh, steady away now. Oh, good God. We'll get health and safety on the case next, yeah. won't we? <laughs> So what's the idea? You've got a limited amount of time, is it? Yes, yeah, so we've got 40 minutes, two pallets, um, which is, isn't actually a lot of wood when you take them apart because they just split into pieces. Um, so, yeah, we'll just see what we can knock up. So you've got the rough idea. So is it very elaborate, this, you know, is it five-star luxury for these hounds? <laughs> Not quite five-star. Um, we're just going for a bit of a teepee sort of shape. OK, um, yeah. Just try and make the most of the wood we've got because when you try and build like a box, you have to use a lot for legs and other bits like they're trying to do. I was just going to say, we're looking around here, there's three other teams having a go. There is all sorts of goings on over there. There's measuring tapes. Well, I don't quite know what he's doing. It's a bit wonky. The legs aren't quite the same length. (laughs) Oh, well, we'll see how we get on anyway. Well, good luck anyway. I see Michael is the foreman, chairman, whatever you want to call him, the boss of making this dog kennel. Nathan and Harvey, you're right. all sweat here. How are you coping? Yeah, it's all right. Not, not bad, like. Not bad, like you're there with a blooming great big lump hammer and a, and a j- damn big chisel. Are you getting there, Nathan? Uh, I, well, I'm not doing a lot, really. I'm just holding the thing for Harvey here. But <laughs> still think we're the real workers. Michael's the one there with the plan. It's and like then, and then there's one there. fella there on the phones, dude, that Tom Kane. Oh, Tom, is he on the phone now? Oh. Bloody hell. You just can't get the staff these days. So, well, is it a winning model, do we think? I don't know. We'll see at the end, will we? Yeah. What do you reckon, Harv? Oh, it'll be a tough job, I reckon. Top job. That's a typical cool answer, that, isn't it? <laughs> now, if there's anything like his dad's jobs, it will be a top job. Well, anyway, good luck, boys. All right, cheers. Thank you. Stevie Corrin, Vice Chairperson of the Federation of Young Farmers. What a year it's been, Steve. It is. Good afternoon. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's been a different year from everything being put on hold at one point to um, everything back on the swing of things back over here. Uh, it's good to see everyone coming out today to see the field day. Yeah, it, uh, and what a great bit of entertainment we've had. This pallet building is just brilliant. It brings out what the old farm is all about. They'll turn their hands to anything um, you can make. The boys here, I'm not entirely sure what some of them are making, um, but it just shows like the diverse range of skills that the young farmers have I mean from the manual things uh, that they're doing here now to the tractor handle and the quad bike um, and even earlier on there's some of the lads who are doing makeup on the girls <laughs> and it does um, well there might be an odd guacuan amongst us here who knows there could be totally well, yeah there's, there's one in front of me right now um, <laughs> They love to dress up on the stage. This would be your teammate, I suppose, in uh, Jason Moore. Yeah, Jason Moore. Um, yeah, he's the stalwart of the Eastern Club at the moment, being their chairman. So, yeah, he, he does look, look better in makeup than without. Um, I do see he's not turned his hand at making anything with a pallet today. Um, 
he doesn't want to cheer anybody up or doesn't know what he's doing with his hands. <laughs> okay. Oh, poor Jason. <laughs> well, like you say, Steve, it is a great day out for everybody and getting back to normal, it, it is it's fab. I know we're very trader Louis here. The motivation has been quite slow all day, but is that just because of the sun on our backs? I think the reason that there's it's quite slow going today there's been a lot of people making the most of the weather as well out doing silage and trying to get a bit of hay made while the weather's still good because there might be a bit of a turn coming up um but like so the people here are they are here today the ones with younger children like myself uh, man Haley, we've got twins here like the next generation young farmers uh, it's good to bring them down they're getting involved like to see what everything's happening and if they get a bit of interest in it now hopefully themselves and their friends will been interested in a couple of years time and they'll join up as well and that that is what it's all about isn't it it's generations of young farmers and like i was talking to finlow before about how important the young farmers are to agriculture here on the isle of man yeah the young farmers especially the ones that are here today they're at the forefront of the agricultural industry there uh, over here this is the next generation we're seeing and um, there's a lot of people here making friends during events like today that you'll see future um, in the future like at farm sales things like that people that they can make connections with now that will take them through a farming industry for the rest of their life um, there's not many other industries where people get to meet on a platform as social as the young farmers which will take them through what they'll be doing as a business in future years yeah. and that's exactly it. it is setting them up for that experience life experience and also a social the young farmers are never too far away from a very good social night the young farmers, we've got a social on this evening after the uh, field day. Um, and after a day like today, you know, a nice hot day, everyone's got the sun on their back, people are having the chance to relax later on and have a chat. Um, there's also a lot of people who will come tonight who aren't necessarily part of the young farmers, but we'll see what we're doing here today. Um, enjoy the social aspect of it. Everyone gets together, has a, have a good night, and hopefully they'll stick around and join the clubs as well. Kelly Corrin, well, judging here at the young farmers event this year, it's quite different coming to Nokalu for a young farmers event and not to the agricultural show. I know it's really strange when you drive up that lane and see the field so empty. Usually by now you'd still see a few tents up, they'd be taking it all down and it'll be all over. But if we'd have known a few months ago what we the position that we'd be in now, you know, we could have it, it could have went ahead maybe, yeah. but we are so lucky here on the island. We're in a very, very different position, like you say, than in the UK, yeah, aren't we? absolutely. We're in our own little bubble. It's quite nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and that said, here, everyone is really enjoying themselves. You know, the Young Farmers Field Day has always been a popular event throughout the Young Farmers calendar over time. And you have had a really tricky job. The confectionery judging, the photograph judging, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> I might get into trouble after this. People might not like the results. <laughs> it was good fun. It was hard. It always is hard. Um, I had my sister come and help me because she's good with cakes, so she knows the stuff. And so are you. Yes, yeah, so am I. <laughs> um, so it was handy to have a second opinion as well, and, but we generally agreed on every decision. So so what were you looking for? Obviously, we're looking down the table here. We can see chocolate brownies. We can see amazing Victoria sponge cakes and obviously the novelty class as well of, of little uh, what do you call them fairy cakes with pigs and cows and sheep all over them they are yeah. really pretty very pretty a lot of effort's gone in to making those decorated cakes and a lot of effort's gone into making all the cakes um, every class is different um, you judge it differently in every class uh, obviously you've always got to make sure they're cooked in the middle and not raw um, <laughs> And how did the boys manage this year? Because they're not normally the best yeah, young farmers in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't think there are many male entries. Oh, no. <laughs> Such a shame this year. But... but there is one, though, in the far distance. I see a chocolate cake by the famous Finn Partington. Absolutely. First prize for his chocolate cake covered in strawberries. Well, who would have known? A big burly <laughs> sheep shearer all summer. And there he is at home whacking out a lovely chocolate cake. I know. It looks delicious. It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but like you say, Kelly, it is quite hard. Like, how, how do you find a, a winner within the classes? Is it just on, like you say, has it been cooked properly or is there lots of other things? It's lots of other things and every class differs. Um, obviously, Victoria sponge, it's the texture of the sponge, the colour of the sponge. Is it cooked? Has it risen well? It should be just a jam filling only and, and is it little things like that. Brownies should be gooey and chewy, shouldn't they? Um, just... Uh, varies class to class what we're looking for and out of all of the confectionery and cakes and everything that you've had to judge here what has been your favorite 
the cream egg tray bake. Oh, wow. <laughs> cream full eggs of, at this time of year. <laughs> full of chocolate, full of sugar. My favourite. <laughs> that's it. And over in the corner of this marquee is a little table full of posies. I think that's my favourite part of any oh. kind of home produce tent. It's the, the effort that goes into picking them. It's, it's been such a lovely summer for it. Absolutely. There's loads of flowers about. There's loads of wild flowers as well. So you don't have to pick the flowers in your garden. You can go out there and pick some wild flowers and make a nice little posy just to put on your windowsill. Um, they look lovely. They're very pretty, all of them. And also, always a popular class of photography competition. And there's been some real fantastic opportunities to get around the island this summer and grab some good ones. And there is some stunners. There's some lovely photographs up there, lovely countryside scenes. Uh, they're great. Uh, the portraits are really good as well. And the YFC in action is always a good good competition to look at. That's, there's always some good pictures in there. Yeah. And did you have to pick an overall champion or was that few you didn't have to? <laughs> no, I didn't have to do that, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, but it is, it's one of these days where everyone comes together for a bit of enjoyment. It's just the taking part. Absolutely, it's the taking part. It's coming down, supporting, supporting the federation, supporting the clubs and keeping young farmers going. You know, without the support, they wouldn't be able to put this on today. And they've done a great job. The committee, like, it looks fab outside. The tent inside looks amazing. Like, a lot of effort's gone into this. That's good. And this will mark one of the first uh, events of the year since the Young Farmers Concert way back in March, Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. Usually, by now, they would have done all their stock judgings. Um, There would have been all sorts going on throughout the summer. Shearing competitions and... There hasn't been anything, unfortunately, so this is one of the first events, yeah. Well, Brownie Neil, as we're coming to the close of the annual Young Farmers Field Day, what an afternoon they've had. Yeah, it's been amazing. We couldn't have wished for better weather, so it's been a hot one, but, you know, we can't complain. So, um, yeah, it's been great, great turnout, lots of events and domestic classes for everyone to do, so it's been brilliant. yeah. Really, really good. And obviously the field has been cut as if it was going to be show day. Yes, I know. We're really missing it this year, isn't it? It was definitely a hole in the calendar, but um, the Royal Manx Agricultural Society and Carol Kenyuk have been really kind to let us um, use the field and the shed and things, and obviously Gordy Clegg, who rents the land, so we're very grateful to them for letting us use it. And yeah, it's a great spot. It's absolutely perfect. And, and some of the bales too, by the looks of things. There's been a <laughs> lot of bale events here, and the little children have loved it, haven't they? Yes, it's been great. You know, the kids, it's a perfectly safe place for them to run around have a look you know hopefully push them into young farmers or whatever for and when they're older but no it's been great and you know the diggers we've had tractor handling quad handling and the boys are just doing the pallet challenge now and then we'll get some races undergo and then sit down for a drink hopefully a well-deserved drink at that yes it'll be good everyone (laughs) deserves it and it's been a hot day so uh, people will be thirsty (laughs) and obviously the last time I caught up with you Brian it was in March at the young farmers concert it's been a very very strange time since then but it's nice to have the young farmers up and going again yeah very it seems you know like five minutes ago when you think about all the organizing and everything but it, it, it was a long time ago now in the calendar and this is really our first thing back apart from a few socials and um, you know where it's been competitions and people have got together but it's just great to catch up with everyone and you know the, our calendar can now resume again so we've got a few more competitions and stock judging to get in and that throughout the year and um, until we sort of close end of september time um but yeah no it's been great just to catch up with everyone and everyone's really sort of dug deep and took part which is all good yeah really good and talking of the future brian is there many future events coming off have you got anything up and coming um, we've got some stock judging coming, so um, that's in the calendar. We've got team public speaking coming up, which will be good. It's a good opportunity for the young ones to get involved. Um, and then we've just got a few socials and bits and bobs, and then it'll be time for Christmas and the tractor run again. So, yeah, and we've got a few more ideas of charity events and things, so it's just getting them set in stone, and we'll let everyone know. There we are. That was Bryony Neal, the Secretary of the Federation of Young Farmers and some of the other organisers and people in attendance at the Young Farmers Field Day. Uh, some good sound effects of the banging in of the nails. I didn't hear any uh, <laughs> bad language or anything, so they must have been fairly accurate with the hammers. <laughs> Only just pure yeah. old Tom Kane there managed to joust his fingers somehow or another, oh. but that was just before the recorder went on. <laughs> That's good still. <laughs> You're listening to Countryside here on Manx Radio with Kiri Kermode and myself, Simon Clark. 
Well, what a beautiful day it was on Saturday, and uh, I popped along, and you joined me there, Kiri, as well, at the wonderful grounds of St Mark's Country Park, uh, ran by Graham Taylor and his team, and uh, they ran a vintage vehicle show. There was all sorts of old cars, old tractors, big tractors, small ones, and lots going on there, people enjoying uh, the birds and everything that they've got on show. Uh, Firstly, I caught up with Hayley Howard, one of the workers at the park. Well, Hayley Howard, you must be pretty uh, pleased, and Graham Taylor and all the team here at the St Mark's Country Park because it's been a marvellous day and, and marvellously supported as well. Yes, it's been brilliant. Um, like I say, with no agricultural shows this year due to COVID, um, Graham felt that this would be the ideal way of making up for that and show Park in the Park and how much he's expanded it and worked hard on it with the team. Yeah, and of course, um, Graham's changed a lot. He's been involved in the building side for many years, but he's always had that agricultural side and that machinery side, and and I suppose that's how these things are, su- are a success coming about, really. They are. Um, the farmers are always very proud to show off what pro- produce they've produced in the year, what animals they've got this in the year of at the agricultural shows, and with this year, they're not able to show them, and... You know, the tractors and the um, vintage cars. Um, they, they, this is something that's important to them. It's to support the farming community. And it's a great way of show parking animals to children that don't live in the country. And they get to see all the different livestock and everything. You know, and I think a lot of people have missed not having the shows this year. That's right, and, and I saw the younger generation be used to seeing these modern combines and tractors with everything that drive themselves, and to see these really primitive ones in tip-top condition by the people restoring them. The static engines that used to run things on the farm before electricity days, it, it's just a, an insight into how things were. Yeah, and you got you get a lot of the grandparents coming up with the children and... They've been involved in farming communities, so they start to tell the grandchildren how things worked. And it's an educational side of things that is important because we do tend to lose a lot of um, the old... The old ways of working. We're old ways of working, so like the stone build, wall building and things like that. And it's a great culture to have the old things up here and show children how things have advanced in over the years and yes we do have modern equipment and things like that but the old heavy horses equipment and the way that things were then it's much much kinder to the environment than what modern stuff is yes it gets things done quicker and we do need our own produce this year but back in them days it was good honest hard work and you knew you'd done a day's work back then <laughs> <laughs> you did but the, the country park here at st mark's i mean I, it's been probably a year since I've been down here and, and I can see the lakes, you know, when I drove past yes. them before and it's looking absolutely smashing. And we're in the bit here where there's there's all sorts. Just tell us when, when, when you first opened and, and what's here now. I've been open since 2017. Um, I've only just joined the group this year and I'm in charge of the fur and feather. Um, we have all different breeds of anything from pheasants to different breeds of hens, turkeys. Um, we have a stunning golden pheasant and silver pheasants. Um, we have peacocks. And then in the inner barns, we have rabbits, have different types of parrots, canaries, budgies, finches. And certain ones are up for sale um, as part of the thing, and we always support people when they come and buy them. Uh, they get information leaflets, and they can always ring us if they've got issues, and we go and help them out. Yeah, and of course I've been here at lectures, which have been in the rooms behind and everything, and you, you sort of can cater for most things, really. But it is a fabulous spectacle, especially on a day like this. You've got the trees behind us, yeah. the lakes, as we said, that open space. Yeah, the lakes and... Um, a couple of the other places they've got what we call a Fulton which is a little cottage um, which people can do staycations at and it's literally going back to the old days no electricity um, but cold running water they do have shower facilities take the phones off them when they arrive well yes uh, yeah basically it is going back to the old days and literally sitting down and we 
have board games in the cottages and getting the children to just sit down and have a general board game night with the parents, you know, and the feedback we've been getting back from people coming has been absolutely brilliant. They do actually really, really enjoy the time and they get to wander around. The one down by the lakes is excellent. You've got that beautiful pond um, and several, I think there's some swans down there. There's certainly some ducks down there. So we have lots of things down there, which is brilliant for people to come and stay. And days like this, it's brilliant. But on rainy days, we have the indoor play area which um, is another part. It's added on to the back of the um, Fur and Feather Barn. It has a cafe there, which is open um, on the days that we're open. And inside we have a bouncy castle, sandpit, climbing wall, lots of ride-on toys and baby walkers. So it is catered for everybody. And there's some nice picnic benches to sit on. And on days like this, the outside area as well, which has been added on. Sounds a perfect time. Uh, this particular year that we've had for somebody to come and have one of them staycations it, and if they want more information where can they get that? The staycations you can find on the website on the St Mark's website if you just put in St Mark's it'll come up with the um, the list put in St Mark's Isle of Man Country Park and all the information's on there of when we're open what events we've got on we do birthday parties and we do the staycations and everything's there, and there's contact numbers. So let's get a word with uh, John Fail. You're here with a fairly rare machine in this day and age, John. Yes, this is a steam road roller. It's been used by the Highway Board for road repairs, road making. It's 99 years old. 99? Yeah, and it's, it's been on the Isle of Man for 97 years. It worked probably until about the 1960s. I'm not totally sure when, probably the late 60s. I think mostly around the north of the island. Yeah, what, what happened to it after its retirement then? I suppose things moved on to diesel power then. I mean, was it was it kept in good work and order? It's, it's been looked after by various people and it's spent time in a few places. Um, I know it was with the... It was kept in the steam packet warehouses for a few years. It's been kept outside. And um, at the moment, uh, it, it lives up, up near Andreas. So it's stored inside up there. And what, what sort of connection have you got with it? Are you just a, a real enthusiast with it, or is there some family connection? Well, I, I was originally involved, or became involved with it, um, as a, a colleague of mine was, was looking after it, helping to look after it, and he wrote me in, and then as he's moved on, left the island, I've, I've, uh, I'm still here. <laughs> uh, how difficult are, are these things to, to from the start up of the day to get the I presume that there's coal sitting beside me I presume she's coal to get the steam up and, I mean is it a lot of preparation before you can actually get going there is there is there's, there's a couple of hours you have to you have to light a fire the engine has to warm up then it starts to boil the water um, then you've got your steam but obviously you need a, a certain amount of steam pressure before you can go anywhere so it's a couple of hours, certainly from, from Stone Cold. And there's other jobs to do. All these, all the moving parts need to be oiled before you go anywhere. Yeah. Um, so it's certainly not something you can use instantly. Uh, is, is she quite fast or quite fast for it's the controllability? Certainly not fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's, you, you, it's faster than you can walk, but you know, you'd, you'd have a jog to keep up with it. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to drive. It's uncomfortable. Um, Especially on a day like today. Um, she's an open cab, though, and yes, a shade for the sun. There's a nice breeze today. <laughs> uh, yesterday, bringing it up here, it was, yeah, uncomfortably hot. <laughs> Did you take it on the road to bring it here? Only, only up from St Mark's, yeah. so only about half a mile. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, and quite a lot of uh, polishing and cleaning on it, because, I say, it's 99 years old. It's something that needs looking after, isn't it? It, it, it certainly does, and... In the time I've been involved with it, we've we've replaced probably about half of the boiler. Um, we've given it all a, a full repaint. Um, there's been numerous repairs to various bits that have broken. Um, they, they still they still bring a good crowd though when when you're at places like this, don't they? Yes, yeah, yeah. People like to like to wave at you and like you to blow the whistle as well. Yeah. Well, let's have a blast then before we go. Okay.
Laurie Mitchell, uh, you've been at quite a number of these old vintage displays now. Uh, the machine here is still going well? It's still going well. I had a problem with the clutch a few weeks ago, but, but with a bit of advice from by, via email from Newark and Fred's help, we got it going again. So she lives to fight another day. Yeah. Um, I've had her now 32 years. Really? The tractor, yeah. And it was first manufactured in 1947. So she's done well. Very well. Yeah, and of course the field marshals, they're few and far between now, I suppose, aren't they? They are to a certain extent, but there are a number on the island. But uh, yeah, it's it's good to have them out. And, and they do fascinate people just here in the single cylinder thumping away there. Yeah, what is, and they run on diesel, are they? They run on diesel. Um, in the 30s, they started trying to run them on mixed fuels. Um, and the story is that Marshalls acquired a Lands Bulldog from Germany, took it apart and thought, we can improve on this, which they did, and manufactured a diesel running tractor just before World War II, which was the, the Model M. And then after the war, the Series 1 came. Right, wouldn't you say that it's a single-cylinder diesel? I mean, is there a piston in it like a 45-gallon oh, yes. drum? Or? Yeah, it's 500cc. <laughs> well, it's 4995, I think, the exact measurement. But it is, yeah, it's a substantial piston in that sort of thing through there. Is there a, is there a sort of, you know, people think, well, how do you, to, will you to just turn a key and it starts? Or is there well, a... <laughs> the, the main key... <laughs> joking between Fred and myself is he says the key's already with it it's the starting handle it can be started with a power cartridge not a shotgun cartridge a power cartridge but I don't I can still start it on the handle um, and again yes turn it over like a decompressor on yeah, it yeah there's a, there's a you, you put a, a a slight wheel and it decompresses gives you a slight decompression on the chamber so once you fire over, you put a lighted paper, uh, cartridge paper in, as like the old diesels where you had to switch on and wait for the glow plug. Uh, and then turn her over. Then when it gets to top dead centre, the, the, the wheel comes off, small wheel, and shuts the chamber and she should fire then. And how much fuel would she use? It'd be fairly economical, is she? It's fairly economical. Um, they used to say, when they were thrashing, they used to say... If, they used to strap a five-gallon drum of diesel on the back of a motorbike, the driver, and that would see him through the day. Yeah, but there's lots of other lovely machinery on here oh, display. Yes. You'll, yeah. you, you, your, your passion isn't, I know you're a field marshal man, but do you admire all the other oh, machines? I admire yeah. all the other machines, and, it, and it's good when people say, oh, can I bring this, it's not restored. No, bring it, because that's all part of it sort of thing. It's either still in its working clothes or they haven't got round to restoring it. But no, just come and display it because people just like to see shiny things or even things in their working clothes. And that's what it's all about. Now, there's a grey gray and gold Fergie. Can't see much gold on it, but that was my late father's. Really? He, he bought it in 1956, sold the farm in 59. It went to the cool for a good number of years um, and now it's working on a farm off, off Bolomoda uh, doing grass topping and uh, sowing grass seed so it lives to fight another day yeah. so there's my tractor and my, and my late father's tractor there lovely well great to see you again here Ari right. and I'll leave you to it thanks very much such an enthusiastic man about uh, the vintage machinery and his old field marshal there, Ori Mitchell, telling me a little bit about the machinery. And before that, we spoke to John Quay, who was aboard the old highway board 99-year-old steamroller that was uh, still looking beautiful. And firstly, Hayley Howard uh, from the St Mark Country Park itself. What a wonderful uh, afternoon it was. And what a display. How shiny those old machineries were. It's just out of this world, isn't it? Just mm. how meticulous they are at caring for them and just running like clockwork. And you think of, of the people that were there, you think, oh, I didn't expect to see that person there or that person there. But, you know, it, it does get a chance to see how things were 
you know, and the size of the tractors compared to the modern ones. Well, that's it. And also the knowledge, Simon. You know, it can be lost if these events don't happen. It can't be passed on and some little children or even young teenagers could get an interest and hopefully carry it on for the future. Um, but but what old ways and still as good as ever today. And you think of that field marshal, a 500cc single cylinder diesel engine in it and you think you know they were running 500 cc norton single cylinders around the tt course <laughs> and the difference in size between the motorbike and the tractor it's unbelievable yeah, isn't it, is it? it's unbelievable all right um if you want to listen to the program again you can go to max radio's website go to the listen again or the podcast features and you can download that and listen at your leisure for free and uh, you can hear all the interviews in full. So from me, Simon Clark. And me, Kerry Kerman. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.